Day one of the 2022 Australian Open was pretty straightforward as surprisingly, there were no really huge upsets on the women's side. However, 18th seed Coco Gauff did bow out to Wang Chiang in a surprising 6-4, 6-2 loss. Coco looked really good at the beginning, but Wang stayed with her early on and let the 17-year-old know that she'd have to fight for the win. The Chinese woman managed to break first, and as the match went on, you can just see the confidence waning from Gauff. While she sprayed quite a bit of unforced errors from each side, Side, 38 to be exact. Most of the errors came from that godforsaken forehand as she wasn't accelerating through that shot at all. She was hitting that ground stroke better in Adelaide so possibly the pressure of a slam got to her. I don't think golf came to the net nearly as much as she should have. Wong is a really strong baseliner especially when she's on so you need to change the dynamics of the court to combat that. Now giving credit to Wong she played an amazing match. I didn't expect this at all because she hadn't won a tour match since the Olympics and was down bad. I actually included her on my WTA players that declined in 2021 list. Also, Coco won their previous two matches played last year and in straight sets. However, as we learned with Serena two years ago, Wong loves to get her revenge in Melbourne. Focusing back on Coco a bit, I honestly don't know what the team's doing because we still should not be having these forehand problems three years into her pro career. On the bright side, Coco had a good demeanor, even went down five love in the second and fought until the very end, so kudos to her for that. Compatriot Amanda Anisimova nearly suffered the same fate, going down 6-2-4-2 against qualifier Ariane Hartono. However, the Melbourne Somerset 2 champ didn't blink and just weathered the storm to to prevail 2-6-6-4-6-3. I was impressed by this performance because Hartono played very well, but Amanda, like a champion, elevated her game when needed. I think this tough test will help her in the next match when she faces gold medalist Belinda Bencic. Meanwhile, another player in this little mini section is none other than defending champ Naomi Osaka, who prevailed in a 6-3-6-3 win over Camille Osorio. I thought Naomi played pretty decent overall. She started strong going up 5-love, but lost her focus especially after whiffing an overhead. She faced a few break points at 5-3 in the first, but held her nerve and pretty much cruised from there. I think game-wise Osaka can improve the most on her return because she gave Osorio too many comfortable holds in the second set. Then aside from that, the only concerns are the mismatched shoes and then a near shop of all of incident. Naomi now gets American Madison Brangle, who played one of the most bizarre matches of the day. She took out Diana Yastrzemska 6-1, love 6, 5, love. Love. Yes, Yastrzemska retired down 5 love in the third set, but it's not the first time she's done that. Also, Brangle hit just one winner to Yastrzemska's 31, but the Ukrainian hit a whopping 60 unforced errors. Meanwhile, world number one Ash Barty looked outstanding in her opener. Crushing Ukrainian Lesia Serenko 6 love 6 1. She'll next play Italian qualifier Lucia Bronzetti, and then after that, in round 3, perhaps another Italian Camilla Giorgi. Going back to golf section, Coco would have likely faced Madison Keys in the third round if she'd won. Keys got by a stern test, beating 2020 champ Sophia Cannon 7 6 7 5. Cannon will fall to number 94 at least with this exit, but she can take solace in knowing that she played much better and lost to very good opponents in Bardi and Adelaide and now Keys here. I picked Madison to go deep here because she just looks to be back to her old, dominant self. She's playing patiently aggressive, then also she's bringing that intensity which was lacking the past two seasons. In the fourth round, Maddie could meet Sydney champ Paul Vadosa, who's in devastating form herself dominating Aussie Isla Tamjanovic 6-4, 6 love. Looking at Barbour Krachikova's section, all the top seeds advanced without too much hassle. Barbour has continued her great play from Sydney, demolishing Andrea Pekovic 2 in love. Azarenka and Svinalina won their matches in straight sets and are one win away from a third round encounter. However, Vika does have a tricky second rounder in Sydney finalist Jill Teichman. Meanwhile, Maria Sakri's section has opened up after Anstra Burr withdrew ahead of her first round match due to an ongoing back injury sustained in Sydney. The Greek woman now gets talented Chinese team qualifier Quinn Wen Zhang, who got an incredible win over Alexandra Sasnovich. Jessica Pegula avoided going 0-3 in Australia, fighting back to take out Kalanina in three hard-fought sets. On the men's side, things were pretty much business as usual too. Rafael Nadal had a great debut, dominating American Marcos Guidon 6-1, 6-4, 6-2. He'll also be happy with his second round opponent as he gets qualified Yannick Humphman instead of Adelaide 2 champ Tenasi Kakanakis. 
Tanasi played terrible, but he deserves a break. He played 9 matches in 11 days and barely had 2 days to recover after his title triumph. Another man who was clearly impacted by the quick turnaround was Aslan Karatsev. The Sydney champ needing nearly 5 hours to outlast Jaume Munar, 3-6-7-6-6-7-6-4-6-4. I was really shocked that this match was that competitive because Munar usually only does well on clay. Plus, Aslan was in devastating form last week. However, the Spaniard did rise to the occasion, his consistent baseline play coaxing 107 unforced errors from the Russian's racket. This is good news for Rafa because Aslan is his possible 4th round opponent and this 5 hour epic could definitely impact him. Plus, Karasev has another tricky match next versus Mackie McDonald. However, Hubie Hercock still looms as the pole got by Igor Grasimov in 4 sets. And then we cannot forget Karen Hatchinov being the Dodge Lightly opponent in round 3. Third seed Alexander Zverev advanced past testy compatriot Daniel Altmaier in straights and now meets scrappy Aussie John Millman. Zverev does have additional good news as 30th seed Lloyd Harris is out, meaning he won't have to play a seeded player at least until round 3. Then going down, Riley Opelka and Denis Shapovalov are still on course for a third round encounter, though Dennis needs to clean up his game before facing Sun Wukong. Matteo Berrettini battled past both Brendan Nakashima and the Bubble Guts to advance in four sets. He also needs to tighten up his game a bit because Carlos Alcaraz looks very strong, both physique and game-wise. Fellow Spaniard Pablo Carreño Busta looks good too, and his section opened up a tiny bit with the exit of Cam Nori. However, Pablo definitely needs to get his eyes peeled on Sebastian Corda, as the American demolished Nori 6-3-6-love-6-4. Six, 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 I'm impressed by the fact that Corda both won this match and then won it in this fashion because he actually tested positive for COVID upon arriving in Australia and had to quarantine. Clearly those hotel room practice sessions paid off. Then lastly, there's Djokovic's former section, which is wide open at the moment. Though Paul Senego and Kashmanovic look solid in their opening matches, I'm still having Gael Monfils come through as he's still on his hot streak, cruising past Federico Coria and 97 minutes. Ending this video, I do want to express my frustration with the coverage of the Australian Open, at least in the United States. ESPN literally showed like 3-4 to four hours of coverage, and while Nadal was in the middle of his match, they just said, y'all be good, but we're moving over to ESPN Plus, so subscribe to that so you can watch the rest of Rafa's match. I was so confused, especially because they only showed Sports Center afterwards, and then on ESPN 2, they showed reruns of another irrelevant sporting event. Thankfully, I have a VPN, because I'm not going to pay extra to watch something that should be free with basic cable. I'm probably going to talk more extensively about this in another video, but tennis is definitely losing its popularity, especially in the United States, if the cover is this piss poor. I think the fact that Serena, Venus, and Federer aren't playing gave ESPN the excuse to cut down on the coverage because at the end of the day it's all about the money and tennis just isn't bringing in the big bucks at the moment. Maybe the upcoming Netflix tennis docuseries can help regain the sports popularity because it's looking really really bad. Looking forward to day 2 of action, Garbinian Muguruza and Iga Svantec open up on Laver while Medvedev and Tsitsipas headline for the men. Arna Sabalenka will look to battle past both her serving woes and the home crowd as she meets Storm Sanders. Rublev, Halep, and Di Minaur are on Margaret Court, and then the battle of the US Open champs between Stevens and Raducanu conclude things there. So that's all for this video, and let me know in the comments what you think about Coco's loss, the other results, plus ESPN's horde coverage in the comments. Also, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever I post the day 2 recap. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.